Well, selecting a, a bike to purchase or setting up a new bike, what's the most common mistake? It's got to be seat height, I think. If anyone's going to mess something up in their position, uh, that's going to really affect their their ride quality and their sense of of of, of satisfaction, I guess, for the, for the ride, pain, discomfort, that kind of stuff. It's got to be seat height. If if we had like a thousand riders that came through my clinic and and you asked me like how many of them their seat height is is within three or four millimeters of what it should be, it's not many. It's probably probably fifty of them. Yeah. So it's a very small percentage when they come to see me 5%. that they've got the yeah yeah they've got the seat height really really close. The vast majority of people end up with the saddle too high, and this is um, this is a bit of a it's kind of a logical. Uh, conclusion to come to when you first jump on the bike and you try and set your own seat height because going quite high intuitively feels a little more powerful you can kind of stomp on the pedal and push down and extend your knee really really deeply at the bottom of the stroke and it feels quite strong right and if you're sort of getting on a bike for the first time and you, you've, you've never set your seat height before you don't know where it is and you're jiggling the seat up and down being high intuitively feels powerful but what you're looking for really is control not not outright sense of of, of how powerful the bottom of the stroke is. We're after control. So a huge number of people end up with the seat too high. How high, you know, some people, the worst I've ever seen, I've, I've seen people where I've had to lower their seat 60 millimetres. Okay. 60? Six or oh, even yeah. 65 millimetres. That's a lot, right? How do you even get down to it? Oh, yeah, so these people are locking their knee at the bottom of the stroke into full extension with the toe pointed all the way down as well. And they, they, they gravitate towards that because it sort of vaguely feels stronger, but then they end up with pain everywhere, you know, frontal knee pain and lower back pain and all sorts of stuff. So most people aren't that bad, but, you know, if, if we have to adjust the seat height of, of a 1,000 bikes that come through my clinic... Are probably about 800 of them the seat is coming down. Yeah, it's very rare that we have to raise it. Not very rare, but it's rare enough that we have to raise it. So getting the seat too high causes a whole bunch of ripple on effects, which can range from like almost any symptom you can think of. Numbness in the hands, neck pain from loading your hands too much, knee pain, one-sided symptoms, because when the seat gets too high, the person tends to compensate asymmetrically and favor one leg, so they get one-sided leg problems. The symptoms can be, can be huge and widespread. The seat being too high has got to be the number one. If you're at home watching this and you feel like your seat might be too high, what would you recommend they do? We have a video on this topic. Oh, we do? Yes, we do. <laughs> so what, the, the best way to set your seat height, uh, and there's a much more detailed video which we'll, we'll put a link to here, is to, is to basically run with the seat really low for a while and then creep it up in five or 10 millimeter increments you, it, until you start to feel like you're losing control of the bottom of the stroke. Now, we go into more detail in that video about that, how that feels, but losing control just means that your knee is starting to become choppy at the bottom of the stroke. You're starting to lose the control of the extension at the bottom of the stroke. And that's a sign when one leg hits that point, that's getting pretty close to where your seat height should be. So go down really low and then creep it back up until you reach that point. Creeping it down towards that point is much harder. Yeah, but if you creep it up, you'll, you'll get a sense of as soon as you start losing control of the stroke on one side, you know that you're getting really, really close to your optimum seat height. Yeah. So the close second is got to be buying a frame that's too aggressive. I see this all the time. People, you know, overestimate their, their flexibility. They, they underestimate their lack of hip impingement. Uh, <laughs> not, not pointing at anyone behind the camera here at all. Um, you know, you, you're a classic example. You have to ride a frame that's reasonably tall in the stack just because you don't flex forward amazingly. Um, not because of a lack of flexibility per se, but because you're limited by your hip impingement. This is kind of stuff that people just don't know about themselves when they, when they purchase a bike. So buying a bike that's too aggressive in the geometry is a really, really common thing. And it, we all get suckered into the appearance of the bike. So we, we look at a, a really aggressive race geometry frame. We look at the press release and the images of it and we think, oh, well, I've got to have that. That looks amazing. Let it, you know, and, and then once you've got it and you've spent 15,000 bucks on the thing, you suddenly realise that the drop is untenable. You can't get down to the bars and uh, it's going to be a very expensive operation to remedy that. So buying bikes that are too aggressive, we've all been guilty of it. I mean, 
this bike here behind me is is the result of me slowly slowly coming to the conclusion as I've gotten older that my BH was a super aggressive race geometry aero frame. It's just a bit too low for me now. You know, we started to I started to pull the bar up and I ran out of adjustment, so I've ended up with something that's a bit taller and more forgiving in the front end. So um, that was a consequence of me aging over the last six seven years. I'm not as flexible as I used to be, and I'm not racing anymore. But it is very easy to accidentally buy a bike like that and the front end is just too low and you can't get down to it, you know. And we've all been guilty of that uh, to some extent, overestimating our ability on the bike <laughs> to get down to those aero positions and a huge number of us just aren't capable of it, yeah. So what do you do when you're buying a bike and swallow your ego and go for something that's a little bit more forgiving? Uh, the best thing to do, get a high quality bike fit on the bike that you currently own. And, get, and then ride the intended position for a couple of weeks at least and make sure that it feels completely comfortable and then get the bike fitter's recommendations on the geometry for the new frame. Or, or, or if you're in a completely comfortable position on your bike but you've got a 40 millimeter spacer stack under that stem, maybe look for something with a bit of a taller stack, yeah. But the best way to do it is to replicate the exact intended finishing position and then look for a frame that suits the geometry which would fit underneath that. And what, that's exactly what I've ended up with here. We've got a, a, a stem that's slammed, but the, the drop to the bars is absolutely perfect for me. You know, so the stack height of this frame is bang on. Couldn't really be any better for me. Zero offset seat post because I need to get my pelvis a long way forward. Perfect, you know, much better geometry than the old BH. Just suits me a bit better with, with how I am now than how I was six years ago. Okay. Yeah.